Good morning, hi everybody and friends, on this Wednesday the 20th of May. Don't forget that if you are watching this on the Highbury YouTube channel, you can share it uh, on any other social media platform you use, and uh, this helps us to spread the word. But uh, please also be honest, if you don't actually like it, don't share it. We're into week nine of lockdown, and even with the slight easing of restrictions, so that some of us have more options, it doesn't mean that the path we are on is any easier to navigate. Sometimes more choice makes it more difficult. For today though, I'm resting my feet and ruminating, pursuing a train of thought that's been going round in my head about language and how we use it. Language is extremely powerful and the words we use or hear shape our thinking and in due course, our behaviour. New situations generate their own vocabulary. So now we are all familiar with R numbers, PPE, social distancing, lockdown, and cliches such as strange times, unprecedented, unprecedented, life is on hold. The last phrase in particular, life is on hold, sometimes is a bit worrying to me. It's not unique to this time. I've used it myself in the past, but I do think that if we're not careful, it has a tendency to make the bad things look like an aberration from normal life. And does that make us try to push them away? To think more about the limits we have to put up with rather than the opportunities any situation offers? Eventually, maybe, does it make us try to suppress bad memories? Without wanting to minimise any of the pain and difficulty of the current situation, I'd simply like today to affirm life in all its fullness. And two things to help do that. Rather like the birds singing the dawn chorus this morning, these French beans, which I planted in lockdown, didn't get the message that life was on hold, so they have just grown. They're about to be planted in the garden, where they will have their own challenges to face. But that's life for a bean. And then some good words to dwell on from the word to help shape our thinking. This is from Psalm 145, although almost any psalm would do. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another. They speak of glorious splendour of your majesty. They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. The Lord is trustworthy in all he does. The Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord is near to all who call on him. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. Let us pray. Loving Lord, help us to embrace all of life, the good times and the bad. Thank you that you are always there with us, that you have new things to show us, and that you can turn our struggles into a means of helping others too. We give you our lives in full, the good and the bad, to use as you will. We continue to remember those who are ill, those who grieve, those who are working flat out, those who are struggling to find things to do, those engaged on planning the way forward over the next uncertain months. 
thank you that you are a God of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in love. And let's say together, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And I hope that life in all its fullness will be yours today. <laughs>